I have here a simple ripple counter, two flip-flops. The output of the first flip-flop connects to the input, to the clock input of the second flip-flop. Now, we don't really use this design anymore because there are better counters we can build, but in the olden days, this was the cheapest way of building a counter. You just needed two flip-flops and two inverters. The problem with this is that you can get glitches on the output, the count ripples through rather than changing simultaneously, and there can be timing issues because we are not driving every flip-flop with the same clock, there's going to be a delay in here, etc. But nevertheless, as an exercise in learning about traditional circuits, it is good to study this nonetheless. To understand how a circuit works, we draw a timing diagram down here. The input A is a clock input, and therefore we've got this red clock input here. The normal convention is that flip-flops take a photograph of their input at the rising edge of a clock, and I've denoted these times with these yellow lines down here. Quartus will initialize its flip-flops to zero for us automatically if we don't specify anything. Therefore, the output of this flip-flop will be a zero, and the output of this flip-flop will be a zero, and we can show this on our timing diagram down here like this as well. When we first start the circuit, we assume that the clock is zero for a while. That means that there is time for the output of the flip-flop to travel around through the inverter, and we will have a one at the input here, and the same with this one here. The output will travel through the inverter, and appear at the input here. This means that when the first rising edge occurs, that the inputs to these flip-flops are in a steady, stable state. The input to flip-flop number one is given by the red clock signal at this yellow line here. That means there's a rising edge at the input to flip-flop one, it will therefore take a photograph of its input, and just after the rising edge, the output will become that photographed value. Therefore, we get this in our timing diagram. And when there is no rising edge, nothing happens, so I can extend this line all the way to the next rising edge. Soon after flip-flop 1 took a photograph of its input, its output becomes a 1, and it then begins the journey around the feedback loop here through the inverter, and soon after we will have a 0 at the input to flip-flop 1. If we look now at flip-flop 2, we see that initially its input was 0. The, when flip-flop 1 took a photograph of its input, its output became a 1 at this point in time. And so that means that the input to flip-flop 2, which is this B curve here, went from 0 to 1. And so that means that flip-flop 2 saw a rising edge in its clock. If we're being pedantic, I could draw a second yellow line just after the first yellow line to denote the rising edge for the second flip-flop. This rising edge causes the second flip-flop to photograph its input, and so therefore the output C is going to become what that input is just after the rising edge. Therefore C jumps up to a 1, and since nothing's happening in this period in terms of rising edges of clock signals, I can extend this signal all the way to, at the very least, the next yellow line. Same thing happens, the output has become a 1, it then propagates around, and a 0 is going to be showing up at the input to flip-flop number 2. We are now at this point in time, we have got that the output B here is a 1, the output C here is a 1, and this means that the inputs to the two flip-flops are both zero. We now come to this point in time. We have a rising edge at the clock input to flip-flop one, 
therefore it photographs its input and therefore its output takes on the value 0 just after that rising edge and continues up until the next rising edge. The input to the second flip-flop, which is B, has gone from a 1 to a 0. That is not a rising edge, so flip-flop 2 doesn't do anything. In other words, its output stays the same. We are now at this point in time. Just before this rising edge, we have that the output B is a 0, the output C is a 1. During the time between the second rising edge and this third rising edge, these values have had time to travel round, so there'd be a 0 at the input here and a 1 at the input here. At this rising edge, the first flip-flop photographs its input, so its output changes from a 0 to a 1. The input to the second flip-flop is the B signal. It has also gone from a 0 to a 1 at here, that is there's a rising edge here. Therefore the second flip-flop photographs its input and sends it to the output to make that a 0. In other words, we have this transition here in our diagram. And that brings us to the next rising edge here. Just before the rising edge, B is a 1, C is a 0. They've had time to travel around, so I've got a 1 going in here and a 0 coming in here. I've got a rising edge here, so the first flip-flop will photograph its input and become 0 at its output. The clock input to the second flip-flop sees a transition from a 1 to a 0. That is not a rising edge, so it stays the same like that. If we now look at the values of B and C, and we are going to treat B as the least significant bit and C as the most significant bit, meaning I'm going to write the values first C, then B. We have here that the value is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0. We recognize this as in, in, these are binary numbers in decimal. It's 0, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. It's counting backwards. OK, someone has asked what happens if we change these flip-flops to react to a falling edge rather than a rising edge. I've therefore started to redraw my timing diagram. I have marked in where the falling edges are of the red clock line and I've initialized my flip-flops both to 0, B and C. Now we do the same thing as before, just at the falling edge, but otherwise it's exactly the same. So falling edge here means that flip-flop 1 will photograph its input. Its input is a 1, therefore its output changes to a 1 and Nothing can possibly happen until the next falling edge at the input to flip-flop A. In fact, let's be a little bit smarter. We recognize that due to this inverter here, every time this flip-flop takes a photograph of its input, it's going to be the opposite of its output. Therefore, every time it takes a photograph, the output just changes from a 0 to a 1 or from a 1 to a 0. This is known as toggling. Therefore, I can go ahead and complete the waveform for B immediately. I know that whenever there's a falling edge, its output is going to toggle. So I'm finished with flip-flop 1 now. Flip-flop 2 is exactly the same as flip-flop 1. Its output is also going to toggle whenever there is a falling edge at its clock. So all we need to do is work out when there is a falling edge at the clock of flip-flop 2. And we come to our waveform diagram. We see that the clock for flip-flop 2 is the B signal here. So we look at the B signal here. We're looking for falling edges and we find that there is a falling edge here and there is a falling edge here. These are the places when flip-flop 2 is going to toggle and so therefore I can complete my timing diagram. 
flip-flop 2's output will not change unless there's a falling edge at its input and that occurs here and the next one occurs here and that's the only time it can change. Now if we read off the values we see that CB uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 and we recognize this as 0, 1, 2, 3, 0. So we were counting up this time rather than down.